Hello crafty friends, welcome to another 6 by 6 inch paper pad video. For an introduction to this series, check out the playlist that I'll link up in the eye and in the video description. Today I'm going to use some of the scraps left over from our previous card and the purple paper that we didn't cut into. And I'm going to cut some of these wonky heart shapes from them. I'm also going to bring in a couple of solids or near solids from my scrap pouch. This one is a nice peachy tone that goes well with this. And I wanted to bring in a bit more blue, so I think that works. The first thing I'm going to do is cut a square from each of my papers that's big enough to cut a heart from. I might do two of the purples and test out whether I want the stripes vertically or horizontal. I'd like my hearts to be glossy, so I think the easiest thing to do is to cover these bits of paper in packing tape and then cut from them. This is clear packing tape. If you're worried about the longevity of your cards, the yellowing of the tape, then you could use something like glossy accents after you've cut them or you could heat emboss them with clear embossing powder or you could see if you can find some clear tape that is acid free and archival that won't yellow over time. But this is what I've got so this is what I'm going to use. For ease of use I have rolled out a length of packing tape sticky side up and I'm going to carefully add my little squares onto it. And now I can chop this down and die cut them using my mini Gemini. I'm going to use a bit of washi tape to hold my die in place because I do want the pattern to look nice when it comes out, not unintentionally wonky. So I've got my little pile of glossy hearts here ready to go and I want to create something for them to sit on. So I've taken this piece of smooth white cardstock and run it through my cuttle bug with this embossing folder to create some texture. But I don't want the whole thing to be embossed so I'm going to cut it down. So I've cut out two rows, which is about right, I think, for this card. Leave some nice white space here. But before I stick it down, I'm going to mount it on another piece of cardstock and give it a little border. If you wanted to, you could add some colour to this by ink blending on one side or the other. And it'll bring out the texture a bit, but I want to keep it white, I think. Now this should fit more or less on there like that. Yeah, that's good. And I'm thinking of having a little cascade of colorful hearts. Yeah, I think like that. I'm going to move those so I don't forget what order I have them in. Add this here. And then put some foam tape, I think, on the back of each heart so that I can pop them up for some dimension. Okay, so these have foam tape on and I've taken the release paper off, so I should be able to just pop them in place. I think that one was meant to go up there. I'm going to try and have them a bit more higgledy-piggledy than completely regular coming down just for variation and interest mm -hmm. 
I'll just chop this little fella off here. And we could use the top half of them here. Yep, I think that works. For an embellishment, I've got this large butterfly die, which I picked up at a charity shop. And I'm going to cut that out of gold glitter cardstock. I'm also going to cut a second body out of the glitter paper. Just cut the wing portions off. And the antenna. I'll dip this in a bit of glue. I like to use PVA when gluing things to glitter because it does seem to hold it better than any other of my glues. Pop that on top and now the body has a bit more dimension. I'm thinking of popping that there but I do think it might need some vellum in the gaps. I'll spread out some glue nice and thin. Again this is high tack PVA glue, the glue I use all the time. Stick him down and then I can use my detail scissors to cut him out. Just want to make sure his antenna don't get stuck to the vellum because they don't need to be stuck there. So that goes there like that, I think. I think it looks nice. For my sentiment, I've got this grungy label stamp that says with love, and I think that's appropriate for a card with hearts on it. I put it in my stamp positioner because it's a silicon stamp and sometimes these need multiple stamps to get a good impression. I'm going to use Sandcastle from Catherine Pooler and stamp it maybe three times to build up a nice depth of colour. And these stamps are really easy to cut out with a pair of scissors because they are mostly straight lines. And these are the kind of stamps that you could stamp out in advance and cut out and have maybe in a little pot or, or folder or pocket on your desk so that when you need a sentiment quickly you can just grab from these. To stick my butterfly to my card I've snuck a couple of bits of craft foam behind the body in this bit where the wings attach and I'm going to pop it there and press it down onto the embossed panel so it's not actually sitting on a heart it's sitting in the gaps and that way it should stay where I put it but its wings should lift up a little bit like that when it comes out of the envelope and look nicely dimensional. My sentiment could go in lots of different places really that's nice there because it creates a diagonal um, it could go amongst the hearts it could go there or there snuggled with the butterfly and I think I quite like it there because then it leaves all of this empty and white and keeps this card relatively clean and simple it does need some foam under the right hand side because that will be dangling off the edge of the heart that I'm going to stick it onto and I'm going to attach it to the purple stripy heart with tape runner because I think that will stick to the slick surface of the packing tape and between the foam and the tape runner that shouldn't go anywhere. I would like to add a little bit of extra gold glitter just a few little dots here and there so I've cut some gold glitter circles using this die so then we have a nice pile of glittery dots I'm just going to sneak a few, not too many, hopefully, around the hearts, mixing up the sizes a bit. You can actually put uh, glossy accents or crystal glaze over the top of these little gold circles. 
if you want to create a bit of extra shine and dimension. Right, that's this card finished. I do hope it's given you a few ideas for things to do with six by six paper pads that you have in your stash or any pattern paper because you could make these hearts from any size piece of paper. You could also use mixed media backgrounds that you've made yourself to do something like this. So it's a very versatile technique. Do come back tomorrow because I'm going to do another six by six paper pad video using this more earthy, neutral paper pad and don't forget to check out the playlist with the other videos in the series right thanks for joining me today and i'll see you back here very soon bye for now